let's uh, tell you what, let's, uh, since this is a public hearing item, let's take a, just a break for just a minute because I really failed. Um, Ashley Ty has got a special guest that he would like to introduce at the minute so that we can, so we don't hold these fine folks up anymore. But Ashley, go ahead and do that, and then we'll pick back up and move into the public hearing portion of this agenda. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening, commissioners. We've got Jacob Rutz with Samaritan's Purse. <coughs> He's going to come up. Um, Samaritan's Purse, as you know, um, has deer and Adalia. They were here um, for several months. They're back again. Jacob spent so much time here, I think he can claim residency if he wanted to. Um, but we are very appreciative of all the work they've been doing. Um, we're appreciative of every volunteer, but if you look at it on scale, um, the just in the sheer number of volunteers, number of volunteer hours, number of people they've assisted, Samaritan's Purse far away um, has made a substantial impact in our community. Um, and like I said, unfortunately, they've done that twice. Um, but we're great, very grateful to have them. Um, you know, to be quite honest, um, I know we would find a way, but if they were not here, I don't know how we would accomplish the, the mission that they're they're taking on for us. And um, and their mission is not just it's more than just cutting up trees and moving them to the road. They also minister to the people. They love on our citizens um, and and take care of some of their their spiritual and their mental health needs in addition to some of the physical needs they have out there in the community. So I wanted to invite Jacob, number one, to, to give y'all the opportunity to meet him and, and see what a, what a fine fellow he is and, and thank him for what they're doing. But also, um, he's going to give you a little little update on kind of what they've been doing. This is kind of give you some perspective on what's going on in the community. Okay, Jacob. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I actually am paying Georgia taxes right now being here, so I'm basically <laughs> uh, claiming residency. But yes, we've been here since uh, the day after the storm. Uh, we have uh, been writing workers' orders and will continue to write work orders, especially after this last week of rain. We've seen a lot of more tarp requests come in, uh, so we are continuing to accept those as well. I think we have about 210 open tarp requests at this moment. Uh, overall, we have written 2,836 requests for work. We have completed about 571 currently, um, and we have closed uh, others because of other organizations here, because of homeowners getting the work done themselves. And we are standing at 1,453 remaining work orders open. Uh, at this time, uh, just a couple days ago, we did extend our time here to January 25th, so we will continue to be here until then, at the very least. If we need to extend further, we do have that ability. And in terms of the volunteer numbers, we're averaging about 120 to 150 volunteers a day on Monday through Saturday uh, for a total of 1,504 unique volunteers since we've been here. Uh, that's people that come in overnight, people that serve locally as well, uh, so about 1,500 uh, for a total of 34,108 hours. Uh, that is uh, mostly in Lowndes County, but also in the surrounding counties as well. Uh, we have obviously been keeping track of all of those volunteer hours and intend to turn them into the county at the end of our time here. And again, we are still taking work orders. I know we get a lot of questions from uh, homeowners, from people in the community that are still looking for assistance that may or may not uh, think we're uh, open and available, but we are. So at Morningside Baptist, we do still continue to take work orders and we'll continue on take to plan on continue on taking them until we uh, finish up here. And that, that is. Uh, he told you how many work orders they got now. One of the things that stuck out to me is tell them how many you had there in the head. Last year we wrote uh, 656. And how many did you write this year again? Uh, we're at, right now we're at 2,836. So a couple more. Just the magnitude. And I just want to thank you guys. Uh, your community uh, has really just opened their doors to us. Uh, we feel like we're home. Unfortunately, we're used to being here at this point, but it is just great being here. A uh, great place to, to have to be for a couple of months to help you guys out and to just be part of the community and, and uplift each other. And, uh, it's really just, just awesome to be here. Uh, not great circumstances, but I, I do plan on coming back for vacation, hopefully not with any business purposes. Well, we certainly appreciate everything that Samaritan First has done in this community. Uh, not only that we've had, you still have, you know, as you said, you're still getting calls. 
Um, and and that's, that's encouraging. And again, we, we have expressed to our citizens that this, this is a long process of cleaning up, getting repairs made, getting funding before they can at least get back in their homes, parking and all that. So we're just asking for their patience and their understanding on this process. And again, we know we're so blessed to have folks like you and Samaritan First in our community that's helping so many citizens that just really, you can't plan this. This is not a budget item that you put in your household budget to be planning for the type of disasters that we have. And so again, when those things happen, then it's folks like you and others, to be honest with you, that come into a community, work hard, honest, good Christian folks that's, that's ready to do the right thing for our citizens. 